Hey, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics in Domain 6 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies and help you pass the CISSP exam. This is the first of three videos for Domain 6. I have included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Our systems are becoming ever more complex and integral to the success of the business. We are collecting more data, generating more insights, and rapidly making decisions. What then is the purpose of security assessment and testing? It's to ensure that security requirements and controls are defined, tested, and operating effectively to support the business in achieving its goals and objectives. In today's world, no business is going to be successful if they don't have the systems that provide a sufficient degree of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. When should security become involved in testing? Security assessment and testing covers the gathering and validation of business requirements, definition of controls, development of new applications and systems, the ongoing operation, and the eventual retirement and disposal of systems and data. A good way to summarize this is that testing should be involved right from the start and throughout the entire life cycle of a system. A good exam hint, if you're asked when security should become involved in testing, look for the earliest possible answer. If the dawn of time is an answer, it's probably the right answer. We'll start this mind map with validation. Validation is all about gathering business requirements to truly understand what the business needs and validating those requirements with the relevant business stakeholders. We cannot possibly perform any of the testing we're going to talk about if we don't understand what the business needs. Verification is all the testing we perform once we start building the system. We are verifying that the controls are properly designed and baked into the system. We can invest very little effort in testing or we can invest a lot of effort. What drives us to perform more testing, to have a greater degree of confidence that the system is working correctly? The answer is the value of the system to the organization. The more valuable the system, the more effort we will invest in testing to make sure the system is effectively supporting the business in achieving its goals and objectives. Software is complex and it is often built by teams of people. As such, we can subdivide the development effort into different units. Unit testing is where we test individual units of software as they're developed to wildly oversimplify. For an operating system, we might have a unit of software that is responsible for keyboard input and another for mouse input and another for video output. Unit testing would be testing each of these individual units separately. Units of software need to communicate with each other. They communicate through standardized interfaces. Interface testing verifies that communication between two or more units is working correctly. Once a few units are completed, we can begin integration testing. Integration testing is where we test groups of units together to make sure they're playing nicely with each other. And finally, once all the units are completed and we have done a bunch of integration testing, we can begin testing the whole system, system testing. There are various techniques that we can employ to perform our testing. And note that these techniques can be mixed and matched together to perform different types of tests. They are not mutually exclusive of each other. There are two main methods we can use to perform testing. Manual is hands on keyboard, a person manually reading code or performing some action on a running program. Automated implies the use of automated tools, software to test other software. For example, code scanning tools or vulnerability scanners. Runtime is about whether or not the code is running. So static testing is testing a system that isn't running. Static testing is looking at code. Dynamic testing means the software is running. So you're testing a running system. Fuzz testing is a form of dynamic testing. It is essentially the idea that programmers are very logical people. They expect a logical input and provide logical output. If you throw chaos at a system, massive amounts of random data, then you can identify all sorts of unexpected errors and vulnerabilities in the code. And that's what fuzz testing is, random chaos thrown at a system. As I've implied, 
some testing involves having access to the code, and in other tests you don't have access to the code, but rather the running system. Whitebox means you have access to the source code. Blackbox means you can't see the underlying source code. You are testing a running application, and the internal workings of that application are a black box to you, a mystery. There are many techniques that we can employ in testing software, to name a few of the key ones. Positive testing is verifying that a system works as expected. For example, if you're testing a login mechanism, the positive testing would be verifying that a correct username and a correct password actually logs you in. Negative testing is looking for normal and expected errors. Again, in a login mechanism, you expect someone to enter the wrong password on occasion. The negative testing would be verifying that an incorrect username and password is handled gracefully. The system should say something like, have you forgotten your password, and not just crash. Misuse testing is abusing the system as an attacker might. Testing for buffer overflows, SQL injection, vulnerabilities, all that sort of stuff. Abusing the system. The next two techniques are all about making testing more efficient by reducing the number of tests required while still achieving a required level of confidence. In boundary value analysis, testing is focused at the boundaries. Test cases cover the extreme ends of the input values. In equivalence partitioning, inputs are divided, partitioned into groups, which exhibit the same behavior. Test cases are then written to cover each partition. Operational is the testing we perform on systems that have been deployed and are in production. Real user monitoring, RUM, is monitoring the system usage of real users, monitoring user transactions in real time for usage, performance, and errors. Synthetic performance monitoring is running scripted transactions to monitor functionality, availability, and response times, basically creating little bots or agents that simulate usage of a system. Synthetic performance monitoring is a good way to do load or stress testing on a system. Regression testing is performed after a change is made to a system to verify that previously tested software continues to perform correctly after a change. So who can perform this testing? Internal implies a company's own employees testing their own software. External implies a company hiring an independent external tester to test the company's software. Or external can also mean a company sending their employees to test a service provider or vendor to make sure their services being provided are working properly. Third party, and this is the much more important one, third party implies three parties are involved, the customer, the service provider, and the independent third party auditor. The reports produced as part of a third party audit are often SOC reports, service organization controls reports. A SOC 1 report focuses on financial reporting risks. As security professionals, SOC 1 reports are not that interesting to us. SOC 2 reports focus on the five trust principles. Security, availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, and privacy. The five trust principles are most definitely of interest to us as security professionals. Now, just to make things a little more confusing, there are actually two types of SOC 1 and SOC 2 reports. A type 1 report looks at the design of control at a point in time. Essentially, the auditor is reviewing some paperwork on a Monday. Type 2 reports look at the design and operating effectiveness of a control over a period of time, typically a year. The auditors are testing to see if a control was operating effectively over a whole year through sampling and other methods. Type 2 reports are way more useful to us. A SOC 3 report is a summarized and sanitized version of a SOC 2 report for public distribution, basically a marketing tool. To sum it up, as security professionals, we want SOC 2 Type 2 reports. Now let's talk about the different roles that may be involved in the audit and assurance function. Executive management provide the tone from the top and promote and fund the audit process. The audit committee is composed of members of the board and senior stakeholders who provide oversight of the audit program. The security officer advises on security-related risks to be evaluated in the audit program. 
the compliance manager manages the compliance program to ensure corporate compliance with applicable laws and regulations, professional standards, and company policy. Internal auditors are company employees who provide assurance that corporate controls are operating effectively. External auditors provide unbiased and independent assurance as they are independent of the entity being audited. As part of security assessment and testing, it is important to define metrics to measure what matters. How do you decide what metrics to focus on? It should always be tied back to business goals and objectives. If you understand what the business is trying to achieve, you can create metrics that demonstrate if the progress is actually being made in that direction. Two specific types of metrics you can use are KPIs and KRIs. KPIs, key performance indicators, are backward looking metrics. They indicate the achievement of performance targets. KRIs, key risk indicators, are forward looking metrics. They indicate the level of exposure to operational risk. They help to monitor potential future shifts in risk conditions or new and emerging risks. And that is an overview of security assessment and testing within Domain 6, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I'll provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. As I mentioned, this is the first of three videos in Domain 6, so there's two more that follow this. Thanks very much for watching, and all the best in your studies.